Hey guys, we're Chuck and Brad. We're two comedians who do the Chuck and Brad podcast, a pop culture podcast based out of Rhode Island. We just wanted to let you know that we're going on a short comedy tour called Chuck and Brad Reimagine the Avengers. It's our own comedic retelling of the original Avengers movie, and we're touring the shows the same weekend that Avengers Endgame comes out. So come get a refresher and a new spin on the original Avengers movie before you go see Endgame. Thursday, April 25th, we'll be in Hartford, Connecticut at the CT Comedy Theater with B.J. Quagan, Andrew Morgan, and Stosh Makita. Saturday, April 27th, we'll be in New York City at the Pit Loft with Impractical Jokers tour opener Jiggy, Impractical Jokers writer Casey Jost, and UCB veteran Lisa Kleinman. Sunday, April 28th, we'll be at Laugh Boston with John Tilson, Logan O'Brien, Tyler Swain, and Dan Hall. All event info and tickets at chuckandbradpodcast.com. Every night we'll have the comics open up the show and we'll close with our live retelling of The Avengers. And for a tiny bit of background, we've done the podcast for 10 years. We've had on great guests like Jeff Tremaine, the director of the Jackass movies, the bands Bowling for Soup, Less Than Jake, Real Big Fish, Big D and the Kids Table, and many, many more. And if you're a big podcast listener, you might know me from uh, Tell Em Steve Dave. I work on film projects for the podcast Tell Em Steve Dave, which is made up of uh, Walton Bryant from AMC's Comic Book Men and Quinn from True TV's Impractical Jokers. I consistently do the film work for the Tell Em Steve Dave Patreon. So come on out, support this very weird live comedy show, and hopefully more and more podcasts will start doing their own live alternative shows. Once again, that's Chuck and Brad Reimagine the Avengers, New York City, Hartford, and Boston. See you at the end of the month. ChuckandBradPodcast.com. Hello, welcome to another episode of the Fan Men Podcast. I'm DJ Gove. Chris Davis. Sean Hogarty. We have a very special in-person guest this week. Who is it, DJ? So he's been on remote before, but we uh, we dragged him down here from the top of a moose lodge up in Canada. Down from the Great White North. <laughs> that would be me, Mr. Stephen Griss. Yay! Yay! <laughs> welcome, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Chris, appreciate you uh, flying me in on the Davis jet. You know, <laughs> Anytime, sir. There's, My pleasure. There's no Dasani on that jet. You know, It's all Fiji water. It's some fancy it's stuff. Perrier. We only do top notch. How'd you like the uh, high Egyptian thread count pajamas for the, the, the trip? Very pleasant. And the fact that they came pre-monogrammed for me, very much appreciated. Yeah. It, it's you the details of the right. count. It, the it, Chris it really Davis is. spares no expense. Yeah. Yeah, but, but Stephen is actually here with us. Though. Live in person which is Feeling good. awesome so one big thing we have coming up is end games next week we do have end game coming up um we're gonna see it opening weekend we'll post an end game episode we'll have that up try to do there'll be some spoilers so don't listen to it until you see it but that's coming up we'll put, it's gonna be real bad for me and why is that because i'm i'm very very far behind like sinfully far behind to be sitting at this yeah. table and you're going to want to listen to it because you're you're our most loyal fan that's right. <laughs> maybe it's possibly our I only i was going to say i thought he was our only fan <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's possible. i think there's like four of them it's the same problem i had with the titans it's episode three burner because... accounts that he has <laughs> <laughs> uh, plausible he doesn't want it to look stockish <laughs> Uh, we didn't get Titans in Canada till much later than you guys. You guys had already oh. finished the series, and it was still not out on Netflix in Canada. Oh, yeah, so you had to wait for Netflix, huh? Yeah, so and I still no, haven't watched it. There's no DC Universe? In- it's not international yet. Not international yet, which will lead into an interesting other conversation yeah, that we have in news. Yeah. But I'm I'm sinfully far behind on Marvel, like, like I haven't seen Civil War. Which is wrong, That's- but understandable. Yeah, you've seen Winter Soldier, though, right? Yes. It's my favorite one. Winter Soldier was great. It was really good. It's, it's been a minute, but it, it was pretty fantastic. Yeah. So is there a reason why you're just life getting in the way? Or? Yeah, you, it's just, you get overwhelmed, right? Like the, there are so many of these movies and, and I miss Civil War in theaters and I figured, oh, okay, I'll catch it on, you know, streaming or a rental. Mm-hmm. And once you do that and the next one and the next one hit theaters, you know, you don't want to go see the next one until you've seen the ones before right, it. Right. And, and all of a sudden you just fall down a wormhole and now like, I'm behind yeah, comics. Movies. It sounds like falling behind on your comics reading. Honestly, it kind of sounds like everything nowadays. Yeah. Because even like, you know, I know that, what is it, every year there's three Marvel movies now, minimum? Man. Uh, yeah. So like that. So like I know we have Endgame tickets. 
I know Endgame is this weekend. I know it's this big cap for this thing I've been watching for 10 years, et cetera, et cetera. It's not, I don't want to say I don't care, but like, there's no like anticipation. I'm not like, oh, Endgame's coming up. It's Endgame time. Well, you're, I, no, it's just, it's just another thing to do. Yeah, and that's where my question came from. It's been probably since Age of Ultron. It's been diminishing returns for me. It's Ultron too was much a big the, hit. Ultron sucked. It's too much of the same. And I enjoy them while I'm in there, but it's, what's the phrase I used before? It's like cinematic cotton candy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy exactly. it when I'm in there, it's, but I don't need to think about it again after. It was fun. It's movie it food strip gum. You know? Movie <laughs> um, strip gum. Good I think for the I, first couple chews. There you go. And I, we had this conversation on a previous one where I am infinitely more excited about the John Wick movie coming out Me than too. I am Endgame. Me too. Yeah. And it's probably I, blasphemy in <laughs> this community, <laughs> there's but- a, There's a lot of stuff. You know, it's even, even like stuff that's not franchise related. Like, I, like I'm seeing some of the trailers for the stuff coming out this summer. I'm kind of more excited for that Seth Rogen, Charlie Theron movie that than I am. Really good. Mm, it looks really it good. Does look good. It's just I don't know what it is. Like I know obviously it's going to be amazing, and I'm probably going to get a little weepy like, eye during it and everything. But it's like, in terms of fandom, I always compare the Marvel stuff to Star Wars, which will always be religion for me. Yeah, which we'll get to. It doesn't matter how bad the first three were. Whatever you throw another Star Wars, you throw the scroll up. I'm a little yeah. kid again. Exactly. Yeah. I'm 10 years old. Even this, how bad Last Jedi was, was st- I'm still going to be yeah. there for episode nine. Right? Yeah. Okay. And what, what, you know what? what? Which we're I, get there's a, still a part of me that will make excuses and say, no, nah, it wasn't that bad. Is it, I got a bunch of Luke, so I'm okay. Exactly. exactly that yeah. one scene just did it for yeah. me. It's I like it, it enough. But, yeah. No. I. But is it wrong to say that the Marvel movies almost kind of turned into like, to me, they're almost like doctor's appointments. <laughs> <laughs> like they're on the they, calendar and you have to go, mm, but you're but not you looking forward to it. They no, they became Disney movies. Their boxes to check. They became Disney movies. They did. It's a good just point. Over marketed. I mean, they're bright and shiny. They are. And a shiny. bunch of people are going to go see it, but oh, but they want it right. They want it to be an appointment. They want it to be a periodic tap on the wallets no, of see, the audience. Right. That's how it's. Which it's going to be. I don't know if you guys saw the initial figures. So they had a problem when tickets went on sale. Yep. Fandango. Adam tickets, movie tickets.com. Everyone got hammered. People trying to get these things. Cineplex in Canada got hammered too. Yep. Even that, I heard that one too. And they found out there was a chunk of it. People were using bot. There's, there's two things. One, people were actually using bot programs to try to get tickets to sell tickets on eBay. The other thing is you have this like, and I'm sure, especially, I mean, I could see definitely Disney putting a stop to it. You have these movie theater chains like AMC mm-hmm. who have these movie pass equivalent programs, these subscription plans. And all these people want to go in and get their free tickets. I guarantee you when episode nine comes out, there's going to be, hey, AMC, you want to show our movie? These free fucking tickets, they can't, they have to wait a week or so- something like that to set records or whatever. Well, what Disney does, they've kind of already taken a step in this direction. They will mandate how many screens that they have to put that movie on. If you want to show it, you have to have it on 12 screens, 13. I yeah. mean, if you're, depending and, on yeah. the size of the theater, it's a certain percentage of those screens have to have it and it has to be there for so many weeks. Yeah, I think our AMC, our big one, I think it's 50% of the screens in game that weekend. Really? And they're all sold And that's going to be they're one of the problems out. after the Fox. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Disney is 70% of Hollywood at this point. It's insane. It's, yeah, but they're saying, I, I think initial guesses is that you might have an $800 million weekend just domestically US for that movie. Which is, that's I can't even. insane. Mm-hmm. And they're doing, I think they're doing every country at once. So you're going to have the US total, China, Canada, Great Britain, everything all at once. I mean, you could you could beat Avatar in a week and a half. That's that's lunacy. It's insane. It's insane. So Endgame's coming up. Like I said, it's not that we like, we don't want to see it. We're like, bitching a moment and having to go watch Endgame, but it's just this one just doesn't feel the same. It doesn't feel like I'm not changing I'm not the calendar to go. Exactly. It wasn't. It was nothing that was. There was other movies that I had to go see opening night. I had these guys asked. I had something else on the calendar. It's like nah. I'll get to it on the weekend. Hmm. Yeah. You know, I want to jump back to what you said, though, because I think that's a really interesting point that it's it's become a Disney movie. And that's it's almost kind of what's happened with Star Wars, too, since they've brought Star Wars back, is that the excitement and the enthusiasm that comes from getting that new movie, and I don't know if part of it is because they're kind of commoditized, you know that they're mm-hmm. coming on a certain schedule, uh, or if it's just the aggressive marketing technique, but... Um, it feels just like any other Disney advertised movie. And it, it all of the mystery and enthusiasm kind of goes away. And I wonder if that's part of the reason that, you know, we've seen diminishing returns, you know, on Solo, on Episode 8, uh, obviously in some of the Marvel movies. Yeah. That's an interesting idea. It is true, because, 
I mean, one thing too is, I mean, the other thing too is with the end game is, if you've been following this, you kind of have a rough idea how this whole thing is going to go. Some of the original guard is going to get killed off or retired out. Mm-hmm. Captain Marvel's the new shiny toy. Her, or maybe they changed it. Had Black Panther come back is going to, you know, they're going to have like the killing blow or something like that. It's, I think they've already said she's yeah. going to be the centerpiece. Yeah, she's going to uppercut him into the sun, basically. Um, so you kind of already know what's coming. It's a good segue though, because one thing I, some stuff that I did not see coming was Star Wars Celebration hit in Chicago this last week. Mm-hmm. Ah. Um, and on top of which, we're going to get into all the goody news about the action figures and the theme park and all this stuff. They dropped the episode nine teaser. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you guys. So, Star Wars, I don't. What episode nine? <laughs> God damn it, Sean. Your mouth's always full of something when yeah, you're trying to talk. Yeah, that was altered by a Timbit. <laughs> it's about to be blocked that's by it. another couple Timbits. Sean looks like a. Justified. Again. Yeah, he looks like a squirrel stocking up for winter. He's got like Timbit shoved <laughs> in his fucking Jeez, teeth. <laughs> no, so, so they dropped the episode nine teaser. And um, unlike. You know, the Endgame trailers and the Marvel stuff. Star Wars, you know, like Chris has said many times, it's a religion. Um, One thing that I'm going to... Yeah, no, go ahead. Going into this teaser. Think back to the first Endgame teaser yep. you saw, to the Star Wars teaser. You can get this excited about Star Wars, and we'll get into the details. Mm-hmm. Very bare bones. They're just taking little snippets from what you saw. They're not having to doctor footage to, yep. oh, we got to black this guy out, where you yep. see a line of people walking around. Right. Well, there's a giant friggin' hole there. What... Yeah, you can exactly. clearly see they're trying to game you. Yep, on that stuff, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. You hit. Yep, that, you get the logo. You hit the music. Yeah, yep. and everybody was in. Yep, I was. Um, I was. I was live tweeting from. I had the whole panel up. I went to the gym. I was on. You know, I was running on the treadmill watching the thing. I was tweeting on. That the, explains live the tweeting. grammar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did buy a new grammar keyboard with my phone though, so I'm trying to. How about that. just learning how to spell? I'm sorry. I just don't know how to. <laughs> I just don't know how to. <laughs> you don't need an app to do this. I try to keep it short. Um, but anyway, so they they dropped that trailer, and I'm not like, I was crying. I was so excited. It was it was know, amazing. It was fucking amazing. The uh, the thing, kind of kind of what you were saying in terms of Doctor in the trailer or the the Marvel movies because there's so many spoilers or plot points yet they want to show characters and all these different things. They are doctoring or just you know constructing the trailers pretty intensely and showing a lot of crap. But oh, macaroon. Um, but uh, the, even so careful about keeping the box nice and quiet. Yeah, as he's you're quiet, talking. but I'm going to be so considerate. I can't. Ooh. Yeah, but I I can't not see the chocolate dip thing um, <laughs> that you pulled out of the box. It's so uh, good. But the but that Star Wars trailer was it showed very few even plot point references. Right. They, you're seeing scenery. You're seeing well, flavors. It left you with more questions. Mm-hmm. I know. So but that's what a teaser should be. It, it exactly. Should, yeah. Exactly. Trailers have gotten to the point where, and I think Solo did it, and Episode Eight did it too. It gives too much away. A lot of the Marvels do it too. Um, they've been better with with the uh, two Avengers movies. Aquaman was a perfect example. Mm-hmm. You didn't need to see the shot of him in the suit. No. Save that reveal. Everybody was going anyways. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And when that shot happened, it was like, yeah, buddy, orange suit. Star Wars is doing something very similar. So, I mean, they show some costumes, and the costumes look gorgeous. They change everyone's look up a little bit, except for Ray's. It's, they brought her back. Yep. Exactly, because they had to to make some stuff work. But, you know, they they, they give you everything you want. So you got Mark Hamill's narrating it. They show Leia real quick. Mm-hmm. You got Ray versus Kylo, and he's in a TIE fighter. You got... Ah, oh, Le- but you don't know it's Kylo. You no, you imagine the shot, the shot actually harkens back to Vader's gloves. It does in the time. It does. It does. You just you assume it's possible. Um, you get fucking Lando back in the Falcon. Yeah, Next that was Chewie. awesome. He said he was going to get the ship back eventually. He did. Over yeah, over Han's dead body. Uh, no. it's going to be fun <laughs> yeah, having him. Uh, I, I'm very looking forward to a 70 year old Billy Dee Williams explaining how he used to have sex with a robot inside the Falcon. That's what are the do. odds that Billy D. Williams is General Grievous like robot waist down? Probably none. Boy, that was uh, yeah. Crickets. He broke me. There I had to for think about it for a minute. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I had to. I had to <laughs> no, so they gave me that. So Poe's got a new look. Finn's got a new look. Um, they didn't, even though she's in the movie, like they didn't show a lot of the secondary characters. You didn't get like Rose or 
Mm-hmm. You know, any of these like new characters are fast. There's probably a good I was going to say, yep. do you think it's because the fanboys lost their shit over Probably, although she got a really, really good reception at Star Wars Celebration. I, it was oh, nice. Good. As well, she should. There's no yeah. Yeah. dicks I thought she was that, great. Yeah. She but but I think that, you know, that was one of those things where people decided to go after the person because they didn't like the character. And it's like, you need to be able it to was, separate the yeah, two. Exactly. It was a completely pointless character there to have in the movie. There was more wrong with that movie than it was. Yeah. In my opinion, as like a huge Star Wars like honk, Rian Johnson tried to force his characters that he created like into the mythos more than the ones already existed. To, I don't know if it's to get his piece of it or whatever, or his you know have his like legacy stamped or whatever. But it was a bad decision. It was a piss poor move. Well, and I just I, I don't need to a uh, thirty minute. B story that's a you know save the environment thing in Star yeah. Wars. Yeah. I don't yeah. need to see that. Well, this whole trailer to me, they could have named this movie Star Wars Episode Nine. Fuck you, Rian Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame him for the second movie. Nothing no. happens with no, no. Oh, Kathleen Kennedy. No. Yeah. So they, when they re kick this whole thing, the easiest way to suck you back in was to give you a new hope with. New characters. Yeah. We're going to give you everything you liked. Give me my We're guys. We're going to tell you the same exact story again. Yeah. And just give me, give me my guys back. So they tried to tell you a story that you didn't know, and everybody lost their shit. Yeah. yeah. It was just, it's, yeah. And so what's going to happen with JJ? You're, You're going to go back, back to a well. story that you know. You're going to go, how did the teaser end? I like the well. You're going back to the well. Let's, which get, is let's fine. get to that. That, so the couple, like, there's a couple things that I'm, you know, and we'll get to it later. I'm hoping to see, and some things I knew I was going to see, I did not. See fucking Palpatine coming back at all? I if I was a little more limber, I'm a little heavy set. I would have cartwheeled out of my friggin' chair in my office. Please try. Oh my god. Please no, because I want to make I, it to episode film nine. It. I beg um, you, Stephen, get the camera ready. I um, the churl was awesome. It was like, and then he comes out. Ian comes out and he's like, and he does the emperor voice. He's like, roll it again. And I was like, like fucking people watch their shit. Like they showed the crowd, people are crying. They're everyone's so excited because it's Star Wars. Is I mean, Marvel means a lot to people too, but I just Star Wars is to me has that it pulls on my heartstrings more than Marvel is a giant marketing company. Marvel makes a ton of money, it but it's it's a stretch to compare the two. It is because before the movies, even the Marvel characters were secondary to your Trinity. That's true. Your top three were D- DC's top three. DC's yeah, but Spider Man coming in at four. Yeah, 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 I would say so. Yeah, maybe he's yeah, yeah, clearly the exactly. Um, but it's just it was such a good trailer, and it just like you said, the music and that's the other thing that got me too is not only did they show Carrie in it, um, but they use like the uh, the Leia Hanalei as well theme from Empire as like the music you note still for have it. Have the Williams score behind oh, it, like yes. I, like you know I have Robin Williams forearms, all the hair stood up on my arms. I was like, <laughs> it was just it got me. Like I'm I'm I'll probably see like, that movie no, John, no. ten times in the theater. So. Um, it w- it was probably it was a better trailer than Force Awakens. Yeah, I'd have a lot more things to say, but this cookie is really good. Yeah, you yeah. just keep eating. That's fine. <laughs> You're probably contributing just about enough. That's it's. <laughs> listeners are like, but it's, it's well, this awesome. is calmer and less arrogant. Yeah, somehow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I see. What else happened at uh, Star Wars Celebration? Wait, that's it. No more Star Wars. Mm. No, we're oh, still, we're no. Still, oh, hold on a oh, go. If we're going to talk about the trailer, yeah. I think we also need to talk about how great it is that the trailer has turned into a meme. Um, oh, I don't know yeah. how how many you guys have seen, but I have seen a lot of recuts of that trailer where the laugh has been edited to another laugh or yes. any other group of laughs. My favorite might be Seth Rogen's. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. That's the one that I was going to put Seth Rogen in there. I haven't seen any of these. Yeah, and then like so Seth Rogen tweet like someone tweeted to Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen just replies like it was my it was a, a pleasure and an honor to be part of this or something like that. Um <laughs> they put his that, laugh at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his distinctive like, <laughs> <laughs> what cr- what cracked me up, there was actually people online who thought that that laugh that was, was Mark Hamill doing the Joker laugh. Like, oh Luke's going evil. It's like, no, no, that was Jamo, what I first, it was the Emperor. <sighs> that's what I first heard. I, I heard it and I'm like that, that got posted like Joker. everywhere. Yeah. 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 It's like, no, there's a reason why Palpatine himself walked down the stage and told him to roll the trailer again. Mm. The uh, I did see one cut that I liked, which starts with the, you know, starts close in on her starting to run in front of the TIE fighter yep. and then the TIE fighter blowing her up and then credits. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, the other one that uh, that I really liked was uh, somebody cut it again, uh, get right to the end where you get the laugh, and instead it was, 
Oh, Misa Jaja, Misa, your friend. <laughs> yeah. Which actually, he was there, I guess, and got a really good ovation himself, too. Really? Yeah. yeah, so much. I, I think that's how bad episode eight was, is that all People the bad yearn for Jar Jar. towards yeah. Ahmed Best for being Jar Jar is just up in smoke. It doesn't matter anymore. So I like to go the opposite direction. That all the people who are bitching maybe have like jobs and families and mature it out of oh, the yeah, yeah, complaining yeah, yeah, on yeah. wine phase of the life. If you think that but, reduces your ability to bitch and be a whiny yeah, and crappy you know. fan, I yeah. But hopefully, yeah. I can hope that. Uh, Star Wars is the best. It really is. So episode nine, December twentieth. It's it's you know this is the end of what they called the Skywalker saga. So this is the last of like you know our our guys. Little aside. Yeah. Quick please, question. Please. Especially where we have a guest in those. Yes. So comparing the Marvel and the Star Wars and everything we're talking about, the marketing that goes into the two of them, which do you think is more impressive? The fact that Marvel can just release a Memorial Day movie, which is generally your temple kickoff to summer yep. every year, or that Star Wars actually made Christmas a, big a destination again. date again? Ooh, Studios avoided that for they did. years and years. Because the theory was n- people would go, but- not for that type of a movie. That's where rom coms. Yeah. You used to only get yeah. You used to, yeah. You used to only get stuff like um like you get Christmas movies obviously, or you yeah. get like you said rom com stuff, comedy or something Sweet like Home that. Home Alabama it's, or some shit. It like was that, you know? designed for like a Melissa McCarthy movie. Exactly, drunk, exactly. You know? Not your massive, you know. This is what my parents are doing after the kids movie. are gone. Yeah, so they were expecting to pull in over a billion dollars on you know on a Christmas movie. It's caused us some problems because I you know now that my kids are old enough to go to. Uh, a movie with me, Star Wars movie, um, and Jen's more or less willing to go. But the Christmas movies are particularly problematic because I want to book tickets for like the first, mm-hmm. the first morning show of Christmas it's- Eve or of uh, or of the day after Christmas. You know, some, oh, yeah, yeah. the morning shows are great, but the weather here invariably so many times we have been be heavy, yeah. going through frozen rain or whatever, and so my wife's gotten to the point where she's like, I. You know, don't don't book those. Don't do those, and that no. that actually prevents me yeah. from taking the family to go see Star Wars. It's interesting. That's a great point. I hadn't even thought of the family connection. The m- thing that made me think of it again is at in the middle of the teaser this Christmas. They're not giving you a date. Mm-hmm. I mean, Christmas is the end game for these guys. No yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but it's actually <laughs> the family thing was a great comment there because. This has actually become a tradition. Right. Since they kicked back, Harley and I go to a Star Wars, and she expects it. We go to a Star Wars movie every Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. So as my wife's getting together and stuff- That only happens if they keep doing them. And it's just the two of us. Mm-hmm. I have to take Heather at some other point, but that's daddy and Harley time. We go see whatever that new Star Wars is every year. That's nice. the, us with the, the, you know, the Marvel movies. It used to be- So they actually do an endgame early this year, but nor, tr- you know, traditionally since this whole monster started- They've taken the first weekend in May, yep. and that's when they released their Marvel movie, um, which is also my wife's birthday weekend, which has always been fun. It makes for some fun arguments or discussions. You're making sarcastic eyebrows there, DJ. Shut up, Sean. Like he was um, going <laughs> to take her to dinner if he stayed home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would pay to be a fly on the wall in that house just for a day. Oh, I'd, my God. I'd give up you, everything. <laughs> you have to get April on a pod. You need to see April live talking to you. Oh. It, it, it's it's the point where she, she doesn't even mind it really anymore. It, she's more mad now when I, like, you know, it's like, you know, her birthday, whatever, because her birthday is May 4th. And you know, oh, she'll wake no. up and come down really? and I'll be like, happy <laughs> oh. Star Wars Day. And I'll like my Star Wars shit on it. Oh. I do it on purpose. She's shaking her head more at what you're wearing, not the fact that you forgot her birthday. That's probably, yeah, because I'm just like a Jawa <laughs> at 8 o'clock in the morning making French toast. And I didn't make her any for some reason. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wasn't, I, wasn't there something else I was supposed to do today? Hmm. What was that? What else? <laughs> Unlike Sean, who makes plans and says, wait, I, that's Jen's birthday. I'm going to have to ask for permission before I can say yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. after, after X amount of years, it's like, you know. Like I said, my birthday, it's like whatever. It's like I'm something. quite sure Heather would be happier if I just wasn't at the house. There we go. Which I, I think that's are. true in that's my true. case. That's fair. All, all, all year round. Yeah. So the, the Star Wars trailer, like I said, for me, like even with the Endgame stuff coming up, and I think may, maybe Star Wars leads to a little bit of the excitement out of Endgame because now it's like, I just want to get to Star Wars. I just want my Star Wars movie. Mm-hmm. But like Chris also said, you know, me and Chris were both big John Wick fans. I think John mm-hmm. Wick is going to be a more exciting movie than Endgame and there's even some like non-franchise stuff this summer I'm looking forward to even some of the animated stuff I'm kind of looking forward to I forget, I keep forgetting like in Lost and all the shuffle freaking Toy Story 4 is coming out this summer oh, too and I love Toy Story so that's right June June 
Yeah, I keep forgetting about that too. So they do is like Speaking Disney of, is going to make all the freaking money. So they have like six weeks worth like nine money, movies. Mm-hmm. Dumbo is out. It's How's doing, it doing. It's doing so so. My kids did not want to go see it. They had the opportunity Probably this cared morning. Less. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not into it. I don't want to see it. It was a weird get though, because like, so my my daughter I has seen Dumbo. Tanking Dumbo's a tough call. get. Dumbo's a fucking weird movie, man. Yeah. What's the last Tim Burton movie you liked? Um, Big Fish. What was the last? Uh, Big Fish was fantastic. What's he done since Big Fish? Has it been that long? We since? did those. He did those horrible Alice in Wonderland monstrosities. Oh, I don't think mm-hmm. I saw any of those. What else was Johnny Depp in? I see. I um, saw them. Unfortunately, uh, uh, Willy Wonka. Did he do Willy Wonka? Yeah. He, he did. did but that was before. Wonka. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I. I mean, in theory, I, I like his art style, but, but, yeah. yeah. Uh, Tim. Quick side note, because we don't stay on path too well. Um, Tim Burton. Note. Um, they announced they're doing uh, Fathom events. They're releasing Batman 89 oh, back into the theater and returns. Four different nights, but not four nights in a row, thankfully. No, it was just nice. Yeah. We should at least, at the very least, we should go see Batman 89 Batman. and then do like a Batman retrospective. You know, I don't like, think I've ever watched those 89 Batman movies. What? Really? <gasps> I, don't think I've seen them. I will forgive you, Marvel, but sir. Is it youth or Canadianism? Uh, probably youth. Hmm. But if they're coming back to theaters, as long as they hit Cineplex in Canada as well. They should. That's they're, something. Yeah, like, Fandom's yeah, doing them. Uh, yeah, Fathom's doing them. So like the, the, the Fathom event ones. Um, that should be cool. I, so I never saw... Um, so that's, that's not proper sentence structure. I did not see... <laughs> <laughs> I did never it see me in a Batman I in a movie seen, theater. I never seen no no to bite in a movie. Um, I did not see 89 Batman in the theaters because I was seven at the time. Uh, I believe that summer... Oh my God. That was my religion. Yeah. That Couldn't summer, be. I got to go to. I used to, during the summer, I used to maybe do one movie. I'm pretty sure that summer was Ghostbusters too. I had to go see. Over and, uh, you you failed. Failed. I was seven. You, you, you chose so horrible. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, I did also I did buy the Michael Keaton Batman action figure and the Batmobile and all that stuff. So that's true. Um, and may I think maybe Dick Tracy came out. Dick, Dick Tracy came out that yeah. summer too. Maybe I forget. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that has that to be done. Sucked. Mm-hmm. I, I loved that. I still love that movie. Um, I'd be interested to hear what you do think of 89 Batman. Um, just, you know, Steven from a, you know, when you do see it, just because it was such a big deal for certainly elder folks of Chris and oh, my age, huge. right? That you was didn't a, have that type of yeah. content. No, you had in the movie theaters. Well, yeah. It was the first time that your beloved character got treated with respect and, and brought to the screen. Mm-hmm. Right. And I mean, for me, I'm surprised I haven't taken the time to watch it because I love Michael Keaton. Well, see, I, um, I, the idea of Mr. Mom as Batman that was, was a big problem. I was, it was not a big into that. And honestly, that he's he's my least favorite part of the movie. I mean, I liked it, but curly haired Bruce I, Wayne didn't do it for me. I still like him right. better than most of the other Batmans that have. No, oh, totally agreed. The cowl. Yeah, my my favorite. Batman is probably Batfleck. Batfleck. Batman, Batfleck's my favorite too. Even though those movies, you know, were that him he played in the those character movies. the best. Yeah, both part, both yeah. sides, of both the sides yeah. of the yeah. character. Yep. So yes, yeah, so that's something we have to do. So, so more back to news roundup, more Star Wars stuff. So wait, oh, oh go, keep going, keep going. No, yep. so they did announce at Celebration some of the uh, Star Wars Galaxy Edge stuff coming out for the Disney parks. Um. We're not going to be able to do that at launch or do that together. That's just too big of a heavy of a lift. Um, it's going to be insane. But some of the core things that are coming out of it is that they are keeping true to the the atmospheric part of it, where they made Coca Cola, who's also a very powerful company, redesign their packaging and their logos so it doesn't look like Coca Cola. Yeah. You're going to go buy a Diet Coke in this park, and it's going to be this orb with like these gears on it to open it with like some alien font on it. it doesn't even look like a Diet Coke. It's going to be pretty cool. Um, also, That's really cool. which it is, is ballsy cool. from a marketing standpoint, from an atmospheric standpoint, the the approach to immersion. I, I'm worried that it's going to be thrown off by just the scales of crowds and stuff. I having having gone to the Harry Potter stuff, which yep. which is mm-hmm. the nearest analog, I think. In in you know, I haven't been to Avatar, but I don't think people care about Avatar like people. The world yeah, like, Avatar no. are actually longer than Harry Potter. Right. Yeah. But but the but the immersion, the desire yeah, I and I didn't do it because of the weights just made it. Yeah, yeah. More no, the weights are insane. It's soaring on a band. The the crowds in Harry Potter land and the way that that dealt with it was it was somewhat manageable when we were there. But I'm worried about never being able to see Star Wars 
Galaxy's Edge just because I can't fathom that it will never be not overpacked. Well, there's a couple of things. So number one is they've made measures. People have bitched about on the news. They took away smoking areas. They shortened stroller sizes, all these things to make more room. Um, they also, they're going to have hard cap limits on the people that can go in there and the way they're going to funnel people. And they, I guess they have this all figured out. Um, they're going to test run at Disneyland because Disneyland's having like a preview a couple weeks. Well, and Disneyland will shut down because of capacity. Oh yeah. Way more often than Disney World. Yeah, it was half the size too. It's... But the biggest thing where I think, and this is all just rumor, um, going to the Disney World part of me, there's a very strong rumor that by the end of this year, you're going to have certain rides only have fast passes available if you pay for them individually. And they're saying that the Star Wars rides and the Neutron ride and Mickey's Railway, all these new rides, if you want to go on these things, unless you're staying at like a deluxe resort, you can't get fast passes for things with your fast pass app. So you're not going to have the Woodley teams or the Quinceanera groups just walking into freaking Galaxy's Edge to go on Winning Falcon with 95 fast passes. It's not going to work like that. So they have some measures coming in that's going to allow you to Enjoy. Obviously, you don't want to go at launch either because it's going to be August in Florida. It's going to be too hot to deal with that crap anyway. I'm going down for a week in December. I'm going down for the premiere for episode nine. I'm hoping they do a night party so I can sneak in. Even if I don't get to ride this stuff, I just want to walk around and look at it. Um, Because, I mean, just from seeing the pictures, you know, they had um, a lot of the aerial shots because Disneyland is pretty much done. The full Falcon, the X-Wings everywhere, the ships, there's a B-Wing. It's Mm -hmm. like, if I'm Universal... Because I've been to Harry Potter Land too. Yeah. Personally, I think Harry Potter Land sucks. What? It's a bunch of faux facade stores. There's a candy store and a wand store in one ride. That's it. No, there's two rides now. There's two there's rides. Yeah. And paths. a train between them. And a train, train that takes between. between. It's, it's okay. But compared to what this thing's going to be, if I'm Universal, I'm pissing my pants. Oh, I... But but again... You're catering to two scale. different groups, though. No, nah, it's not overlap. There is overlap, but it's not... It costs a hell of a lot more to go to Disney for a week because you're not you're doing Universal for two or three days. No, that's true. Yeah, it's, it's true. so it's a different scale. You can do a long weekend at Universal. Universal is like Six Flags on steroids, kind of thing. That's true. Yeah, and once the hotel's done for the Star Wars land too, it's gonna be insane. Um, it's gonna be no. It's gonna be it's gonna be su- Wookie shower curtains. There we go. They they do have they do, they masseuse. um they have Wookie mm. like backpacks they show like Chewbacca Wookie backpacks and stuff like that. You're gonna be so broke. I know. So <laughs> one one thing they did show is they're gonna have full blown movie quality Imperial officer costumes, X wing pilot costumes, Jedi think robes to buy. They're gonna have a build your own lightsaber area. Mm-hmm. Only ten people can go into the store at a time because it's like a show. They have like actors playing like Kyber and crystal the smugglers. Lightsaber picks the the Jedi. No, 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 no! It doesn't work like that. <laughs> He's gonna be Universal so pissed when that mace window one picks on me. Right. <laughs> but somehow, I supposedly Disney figured out how to do, and not a toy. This isn't like a twenty dollars piece of plastic. This is like equivalent to like a Black Series thing. You mean a twenty dollars piece of plastic sold for forty three seventy nine? Not like yeah. twenty nine bucks. This is like a two hundred dollar Black Series lightsaber that you custom build the handle and the crystal. And they figured out how to make the blade come out and go back in without telescoping. Like, it's a lightsaber. I've been able They've to do that since I was- you pay 200 bad for a <laughs> lightsaber. <laughs> yeah, that's in. It's so, awesome. DJ, so, you know, uh, have you talked to the kid yet and said, look, college, you, you really don't need it. You really I mean, need to have- Jedi like, robes, I need. You really need to have, like, the Judge Smales conversation. Star Wars, where, You know, the world needs ditch edge. diggers, too. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I do need that. You know, my dream has always been to go to law school. Well, the world needs ditch diggers, too. I've already started to make a little jar of money for it. So <laughs> let's little. touch upon something here. So I want to harken back to your fast pass comment. A touch base on or touch back on the fast pass comment yeah. you made. So you're already seeing a situation at Disney where they're trying to find more and more ways to get you to pay more and more money for the same thing you were having before. Mm-hmm. They're shutting down individual parks to do separate ticketed events at night, yep. in the morning, things like that. So at what point does that break? There is, I mean, and we've gone through what, two rounds of rate hikes? Well, it's supply and demand, right? The supply is fundamentally limited and they're actually limiting it more by granularizing it, modularizing it. Mm -hmm. But the demand is, it's effectively infinite, right? It's driven by tourism and, and personal traffic flow. The fact is, yes, I believe it is increasingly financially out of the reach of much of their demographic, well, tar- demographic target, mm-hmm. 
and I look at it from my own personal perspective. So Heather and I take Harley down. I will pay for convenience because I only have one kid. Right. Same here. The majority of those people that are going down, two, three, three four, five, right. you're traveling in packs. Yeah. yeah. And they're already shelling out huge, just and there huge are, this get is there, their, be there. Oh yeah. This is their one the big park. vacation. Exactly. Right. So for me, I, I don't see that changing until somebody steps up in the competition game. Uh, that to me is what it boils down to, right? Like Universal, the Harry Potter park gave them a little bit of an edge for a bit. With Star Wars, they're going to get hammered. And I, I can't remember when, but I think that they're losing the rights to all the Marvel rides that they have at Universal in the next couple of years as well. Yeah, I think it's 2023. They have to basically just take the Marvel names off it. Just, right, so they're going to just reskin just, them. Yeah, they'll just reskin them. I'm praying that that means they can finally bring back the Back to the Future ride oh and my put God. it in space of one of those other things. Yeah. Well, right now, the Back to the Future ride is the Simpsons ride. Yeah, I know, but yeah. it's take trash. one of the other things. Yeah, put but Disney owns that. That's Oh, yeah, shit, they do. Oh, they do. They own right. Back to the Future. No, no they own Simpsons. 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 Yeah. Oh, and they own it big. We'll time. get there. Yeah. yeah, we'll get there. But that's an interesting thing too. So again, theme park. Yeah, you're uh, right. Rights are different, but you know, once that hits, Universal has to come up with something pretty damn good. Yeah, well, they're pretty getting, quick. They they they're getting Nintendo within the next five. Are years. they Nintendo Land? I that is not the same kind of draw. It's not. it's not. It's not. Definitely not. To get a younger demo, but yeah, not the same not the money. Same, no. no. But to go back to what Chris was saying, the thing is, is like, and I, th- I, you know, I'm, gonna, I think both of us are a little bit a part of the problem because I'm the same way. Like this trip we're going yes. down. Well, no. So this trip we're going down. Our plan is not to buy five days worth of park tickets. It's to hey, what nights have limited events? We'll just do those instead. Right. Because I don't want to stand in line for four hours to do Avatar or stuff like that. I just don't want to do it anymore. I've done it before. I've been there, done that. So I'll pay the little bit. Granted, you know, if I have it, if I can swing it, I'll pay the little extra to do the convenience thing. With the fast pass stuff, if they are going to start doing something where it's like if you stay at a, a value resort, you get one, or if you're at a deluxe, you get your three, or then you can buy like a max pass thing at Disneyland for another fifteen bucks a day. I'll do it because maybe it's for the convenience. To, if you did that all over in. Florida, dude. Max Pass is day. the shit at Disneyland. What is, I've never heard of it. Max Pass is basically they do it at Disneyland. It's um, I think it's up to twelve bucks per person per day. It's an add-on for your ticket, and it's just the fa- uh, the paper Fast Pass system where you go put your card in, you get a Fast Pass, and it tells you what time you can go hit another machine and get another Fast Pass. Except you can do it all on your phone. So you walk through the turnstile and go Fast Pass. Set a timer for thirty-five minutes. Fast Pass. Set a timer for an hour and ten minutes. Fast Pass. Right. And just stack them up. Like we rode everything at Disneyland. Oh, that's awesome. It was amazing. So I'll do that all day. I mean, I'm not they're not gonna charge someone a hundred dollars to get a fast pass. It's, that's I don't think we'll ever get to that, but I think they need to figure out some kind of the only way to handle scale and efficiency and stuff is to build some kind of logistical system that takes into account where people are, how fast they're moving, or how fast they can be moved. Which they can do because everyone's wearing an RFID chip on exactly. their Exactly. And and so you know, I'm much more willing to pay, you know, 900 bucks for my family to go to the park for the day if I can have, before I go in, say, okay, I have to have these things and I want to be able to hang out for this much time in these areas and have it go, okay, we will figure out how to make it happen. You know, follow follow your little icon along the path, you know, Here's or we will track, hey, you are falling off your schedule. We've adjusted to put other people in front of you. Basically, so when I get to the ride, I go on, I get through, right? From an efficiency standpoint, that allows them to both maximize people without having the waiting, right? It needs to be dovetailed. So- Well, and and the benefit of that is one, it's a premium experience, so you can charge people for that. But two, the less time people spend waiting in lines, the more time people spend doing stuff. But if you do stuff, you buy stuff, you spend money. But it needs to go beyond a premium experience. It needs to be the experience, right? That doesn't mean getting there, you can't charge people a premium to get there, but that's how you get over this hump of, at some point, the ability for me to get so much entertainment in my little VR, sit on my couch or in my hamster bubble with, you know, interaction with everything I could possibly want, you know, getting me to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to leave my little bubble yeah, is going to just start being not worth it. So you have to keep it, you know, you need to keep that supply demand point where you're milking me, but it's worth being milked. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think they're reaching the tipping point on that. Yeah. Because nobody wants to spend that money to be in the park all day and go on two rides. Yeah. It, I literally it, decided not to go to one of their parks exactly for that reason. I went to Epcot where I knew I was going to be walking around and experiencing and drinking and eating yep. and not, you know, and not waiting in line. Yeah, it's definitely a problem. And the biggest thing is that they give everybody, and now it's even, it used to just be the hotels that were the Disney hotels. But now they've extended the privileges out to like, you know, the holiday and down the street. They, everyone can book their fast passes at two months out now. So there's, it's just, they, they got to, and how do you curtail that? Well, you make it so you got to start paying for them. See, to the point where when Star Wars Land opens, or Galaxy's Edge, the, um, the two new rides, which is the Smuggler's Run, the Falcon Ride, and the Rise of the Resistance Ride, will not even have fast pass available. They're not even on the schedule yet. Uh, part of that, Part of that is because that way they can have both sides just move people through more efficiently because the crowd's going to be so insane. But a lot of people think it's because when they do decide to turn them on, it's going to be an add-on. Right. Yeah. Which, I mean, they spent like a zillion dollars on the thing. You got to make the money back somehow, but mm-hmm. we'll see that, how it goes. On that note, have any of you been to Disneyland since they put in the uh, the VR thing? The So they did a Star Wars VR thing <laughs> at Disneyland. Oh, yeah. I'm in the commercial for it. Are you really? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I was the very first person in the front of the line, I had the first ticket time slot book the day it opened at Disney World. It was for the last Crazy. Star Wars movie. It was for episode Crazy. eight. Yeah. So yeah, I um I got like a whole big like pack of stuff and I got pictures taken with the CEO of the company and I'm in oh, the commercial damn. for the Void, Void. VR. Yeah. yeah. The Void VR. I've done the Void VR in California, in Vegas, in Orlando, in New York. I um, have done nothing. Well, we have one in Toronto. Yep, the one in Toronto, yeah. Um, it's it's rat. Have you done it yet? I did I did it when it was Ghostbusters. Okay. And it was that was awesome. fun. Me and Chris yeah, did Ghostbusters in New York. Fun. It was so cool. The Star Wars one is rad, man. Is it? It's rad, yeah. And they're they've been remodeling ours because it was closed down the last time I was at Rec Room there. So I don't know what they're putting in. I'm praying that it's Star Wars. Yeah, because then the new ones now are Star Wars. Um and there's a Star Wars uh, I think there's an uh, an addendum coming to it and then Wreck It Ralph, which is fun too. Ooh, that'd be mm. cool. Like yeah, it, Ralph. Yeah, um, yeah. That's that's an amazing experience, Sean. It is. If you're somewhere that has one of those, even if you just end up going by, um, I can't talk. <laughs> um, even if you just end up going by yourself or with yeah. um, like a random group of people who are there, yeah. totally worth the experience. I'll you know, do it at it, some point. You know, it's it's tough right now because we all have things going on. You know, Chris has the new house. Sean's got some expense stuff. I got the kid going to college. I have some other medical expense stuff going on, but. There is possibly a time where, you know, not this year probably, but, you know, we could book a couple of DVC rooms and go do a four-day weekend, beers and Void VR, and I'm just saying it could happen. It's recording. Yeah. Yeah, let me know your availability. I'm saying, if you have to pay for, when you have to pay for hotel rooms, it takes a huge chunk off it the top. It does take a chunk. Yeah. The, we'll see. Right now, the attitude in my house is... You got to go to New Orleans. Well, that's why I You're never the going anywhere else ever again. <laughs> well, you want to go to your 30 high, thirty year high school reunion? Yeah, I don't think you should be going to that. Yeah, so we'll see. Yeah, so Star Wars Land is going to be insane. The movie is going to be, I have very much faith the movie will be very, very good. I'm probably going to start crying when the scroll hits. Um, <clears throat> the scroll hits? The scroll. Yeah. I Not know. the scroll. <laughs> Not the scrolls. <laughs> Not the scrolls. <laughs> By the way, I saw that movie again. So I, you know, I gave it a semi-favorable review when we talked about it. Yeah. Saw it again. Ten minutes in, I was like, "Get me the fuck out of this theater." Really? I want nothing. I'm over to the dark side. I was wow. playing with the phone. I was like, I went full neg. I was like, "Get me the fuck out of here. this movie." Sucks. It was your co- like if you went to film school and you have like the cookie cutter like Act One, Two, Three. It's all it is. It's just a cookie cutter set of movie. Wow. I was nice. trying to be nice and don't, give it hey, like. Don't spoil it for uh, for the boy. He's not gonna. He'll he'll watch it in ten years. He'll be fine. That's true. <laughs> That's true. He is get all plans. Yeah. yeah. So, um, a couple other small pieces of news. Um, let's hit one quick one, then we'll move back into Disney real quick. Um, Titans cast their Bruce Wayne for season two. So you will. He's Drum not gonna be a Batman. He's not gonna be Batman in it. But anyone who watches Game of Thrones, go back to Game of Thrones again. Um, what's his name? Is it Lord Jarmon? Is that his name in the show? Don't look at me. I'm the Game of Thrones guy. Okay. Jorah Mormon. Yeah, Jorah Mormon. So Ian, uh, Ian Glenn is Glenn playing Glenn's Bruce Wayne in Titans Season he's, 2. I wonder what accent he's going to use. Because I don't know. he's, I, I think uh, he's British. American? Yeah. yeah, probably better. Well, that, that's what, right. So I'm. I think I'll do American. He's got a, uh, he's got a good, and I wonder if they will well, darken yeah, his hair. Like shit. Probably. <laughs> what? <laughs> Not me, eh? No, <laughs> no, not you, sir. So we have Bruce Wayne. They've cast Superboy. 
Deathstroke. It's going to be a good season. Interesting. It's going to be good. Maybe the Canadians are going to have to watch the first season first. Yeah. Well, we have it now. Yeah, they so have it now. So. Access now. It, it's super interesting for me because you guys have Hulu originals, DC originals, all this stuff. Yeah. And for us, they're all totally different originals. Yeah. So Titans is a Netflix original in Canada. So is uh, CW's Riverdale is a Netflix original in really? Canada. Yep. That's Holy funny. shit. So we get it next day on Netflix. Do you guys have the Sabrina show? Yeah. But that's that's a Netflix Netflix. It's a Netflix show. Okay. Everybody. My daughter watched that for Um but Handmaid's Tale is on a, a thing called Crave in Canada. Oh wow. Uh, I have heard and, that. which is also like the exclusive okay. source of HBO in Canada. Like oh. it's just a completely different Inter- marketplace in terms of media consumption. International distribution is hilarious. It is. Yeah. Which I think ties in great to uh, another item that we have yeah, to talk about so Disney one thing, Plus. One thing you're gonna get is Disney Plus. Eventually. Yep. Um could not could be until twenty twenty one, apparently. Yeah. But you're gonna get it. Uh, Disney. So Disney announced the full details for Disney Plus. And notes. if I'm Netflix, I'm pissing down my pant leg right now. <laughs> Netflix just went up another like two bucks. I think. I think it's like yeah. fifteen ninety nine mm-hmm. now. Or something Disney's like, like, oh really? And they're about to. And Disney's about to rip gobbles of content off of it. So, and the Stranger Things kids are all about to be like twenty seven years old or something like that. So you're gonna lose Stranger Things eventually. You were gonna lose that anyways. Yeah, that's, that's one of those shelf life shows. Yeah, I think this third season is yeah. about all it has left in it. Um, but some of the things they've announced for Disney Plus is number one, shocker, which I didn't expect this to come. All thirty seasons of The Simpsons are gonna be available at launch. Oh, which hmm. is kind of crazy. Why not? Hmm. Um, I'm still not. Yeah. I'm still not here. used to the 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 absolute. What is what's the game that picks up everything in the universe as you roll over it? Katami Damar. Katamari Damacy or whatever. I'm, uh, yeah, never mind. What? We should that's, delete all that that's, stuff. That's uh, me f- I flying sound, right over my head. I yeah. don't know what Sean's talking about. You they're they're aggregating everything. Yeah, they have everything. It's mm-hmm. strange. Um, so they have the Simpsons. They're going to have, I think they said, 100 vaulted Disney movies. Not just animated ones. You're going to get like, you know, uh, the computer Is sneakers. Is Song of the South going to be on there, DJ? That I don't. <laughs> Please. Oh my! I mean, eventually. I want that on the splash page the first time I log on. Seriously, they, all yeah. you need is the Warner Brothers Zip warning at the front. That's it. That's true. Disney's racist. Every um. Day. So you have like you know like the computer that wore tennis shoes or whatever it was, and like some of these old movies, uh, Ben Robinson Room Six and stuff like that. Uh, my daughter's excited because she's getting all her TV shows back. Hannah Montana, oh. which is five thousand episodes. I know. Insane. Uh, f- if you were a Phineas and Ferb person, which actually kind of was, that was a great cartoon. There's a new movie coming out with all the original voices. Mm. Um, you have all the Marvel shows coming out: WandaVision, Loki, and Falcon Winter Soldier, all with the movie mm. talent. As Chris mm. said, that's not Speaking cheap talent. Of movie series, yep. did you happen to catch the the Snuck Mandalorian trailer? Oh my! Yeah, I was getting there. Mm. So the Mandalorian for me is the big get, obviously. Yeah. Even more than the Marvel shows. I'm stoked for the Loki show, though, because I think Tom Hill oh, yeah, does a great job with that great. character. No question. That could be fun. Yeah. He would say before I'm a Thor guy. So the Mandalorian looks fucking amazing. Amazing. It, I'm more excited for that than Star Wars Episode Nine. Wow. I could see Did that. You, I, I, was, I was not uh, the casting that you could see in it. I was like, whoa, what? Dude, yeah, Paul Creed's in it. Yeah, it is. It's it's yeah. gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome, and the the more than just the cast, you know. So obviously, it has got the the Star Wars slash Disney machine behind it, and the money and all that stuff. If you see the the talent working on it, I mean, there's there's some of the behind the scenes that they showed. And it's like there's John Favreau and uh, is it Ta- 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 Taki Wakanui, the guy oh, yeah. part of the Conquerors, yeah. yeah. Thor. Oh, okay, I mean, they just brought they brought all these people in to work on it and write it, and it's just it's gonna be gangbusters. It's gonna be so good, and it's a cool area of time where the only time that they, it's supposed to be I think five years after Jedi the only time that stuff's ever been touched is in like the Timothy Zahn books yep. so it's a whole like blank slate of stuff and what's what's interesting about that and what I want to see is I, I have a feeling that's going to be great like everything that we've seen makes it sound like it's going to be great I want to see how the quality carries forward as you move on from that, right? This is going to be their flagship show. This is what's going to get people to subscribe from the get-go beyond, you know, access to the vault. So are you going to see that same quality of content continue to be delivered on the service a year, two years, three years down the road? Yeah, because they've already said that they haven't officially announced it, but the next supposedly TV series to start after The Mandalorian is Knights of the Old Republic based on the Bioware game. Mm. Didn't they just make an announcement about Oh, it was the TV show. Yeah, yeah. That, and there's a new yeah. game coming out too. So they, they they're and the, here's the the other good thing is the best thing about Disney Plus is and 
this is always Sean's thing. And actually, I think we talked about it when we talked about DC, the price point. Chris had alluded, not cheap talent. They're not doing, you know, cheap shows. Seven bucks a month. That's times, crazy. Yeah, but that, times a billion people. Yeah. Yep. Well, and it makes perfect sense. Seven they don't billion have to pay dollars a month. They exactly. own all this content. Exactly. So, so you'll see the Netflix price come down because that's what's really driving that cost up. They're having to buy all this content from everyone else. That's an interesting idea. I'd love to see if Netflix actually decides to drop their price. And I think it's going to totally depend on how their subscriptions, what happens to their subscriptions, and then how many people they see uptaking on the Disney service. Because mm -hmm. it's not only about people dropping the service, but it's about losing hours watched. Right. Because Netflix needs to see a certain engagement eyes. rate in order to yep. make it you know, effective, right? I know a lot of people that pay for Netflix just so they can sit their kids down in front of like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. mm, which, not no more. Exactly. So it, um, it should be interesting. It should be really, really interesting. So there were a couple other not as big announcements as part of this that really caught my attention. Shoot. Um, one of which was, and it was buried, but they're doing a documentary style series about the Imagineers of the Disney parks. Yeah, my daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got sparkly. How could they that. not done that yet? I know, but now, am, they, now they have a need to fill. Right, they need to time. fill yeah. hours. Yeah. I'm a hundred percent in on that. Honestly, I might be more excited for that than yeah. for the Mandalorian. Yeah, like I want to watch the hell out of that. The yeah. kid's pumped. So I mean, I've, I've talked about you know, that's what my kid wants to do. So she's right read all the Marty Scar books and she has all like the encyclopedias and stuff. Done all the behind the scenes tours and she's stoked for that. Another one that's gonna be hilarious. Is um because somehow I missed in this grand scheme of Disney buying the world, they own Nat Geo now. Yep, really. Disney owns National Geographic. Yeah, so they're going to do a series called Jeff Goldblum's like Keys to the Universe, where it's just Jeff Goldblum talking over National Geographic videos. Life um finds a way. Finds a way. <laughs> Take my money because he's just eccentric enough for that to work. Mm -hmm. And what's awesome about that is the service has already announced that they're going to have 4K and HDR. Yep. So Ooh. when you have National Geographic content presented at highest quality. That's going to be really awesome. It's going to be gorgeous. But what that ties into for me, I have a theory about this. So I don't know if you guys have realized this, but as someone who just bought a 4K TV, mm -hmm. I can't rent any of the Marvel movies on iTunes, Google Play, any of the services in 4K. Correct. Mm -hmm. I wonder why when you're about to launch a $7 a month service that is going to feature 4K and HDR. Exclusive 4K content. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So rentals. So now not only is Netflix questioning what's going to happen here but google play and itunes are probably going to be sweating a little bit as well because there's a lot of money in those rentals that's going to come out of their pockets pretty quickly there is yeah because i mean some stuff like, like so aquaman i'm i wasn't going to buy it digitally off itunes because it was only in 1080 at the time because um the 4k hadn't come out yet yeah mm -hmm. so i just waited for the disc to come out about the 4k so like there's certain things i will only watch in 4k now because i'm a snob <laughs> Stuff like, you know, like The Incredibles 2. I just waited for the 4K to come out yep. because I have to watch that in 4K now, even though it doesn't make a huge difference because it's animated. But um, that's definitely a big, that's, I, never, I never thought that's a big thing where, yeah. you know, even if you, people, even people without the 4K TVs, they're going to see the the shiny 4K, you know, label on it. Like, Ooh, it looks better on this, even well, though you don't have a 4K TV. And, and it's future proof because when they inevitably decide to buy a 4K TV, if, which if they're anything like me in Civil War, it's, you know, five years later. Exactly. But... They're going to be prepared. They're future-proofed, right? Yep. Now, the other thing that caught my attention with this is when they were talking about the back catalog and the inclusion. I've seen mixed articles about inclusion of Star Wars content because I've, I've seen that they've sold some of the rights to the Star Wars movies and broadcasting rights to Turner till 2024, Yeah, there's a time limit. Yep. There is a thing. Or Time Warner, something like that. Yeah, it is Turner. Um, but, but However, so, there's... I So, I, I read, some guy did a write-up on this. I'm like, well, your guy's a big Star Wars fan. I guess what Turner has the rights to is like the special editions and stuff like that. And there was a deal, there was something in, there was some kind of like thing in the Lucasfilm acquisition where they couldn't release the OG untouched versions of it because they were Fox properties and there was the thing. Lucas still holds some of the rights to that Some too. of that, yeah. So I don't know. There were some restrictions on Yeah. That. So I don't know what them buying Fox, they can do certain versions of it I, I don't know how that works because that's my question that's what i want to see well the first eight it, movies are gonna be available at, at launch on they the, will yeah but what i'm questioning is episodes four five and six yeah. what version are you getting at launch mm -hmm. are you finally getting a 4k cut which i imagine you are um 
and what versions? Because probably going to get the the Blu-ray versions, the ones that probably, came out. I would think so. With fucking Hayden Christensen Ghost. Probably, <laughs> but what I would love to see as the final state of that is now that they own Fox and everything else, yep. is that you can now go in and to watch Star Wars and pick which version you want to watch. Right. Oh, is it the, the original theatrical? Is it the mm-hmm. first recut? The second? The mm-hmm. third? All of those should be available. Show that me to me would make perfect. Without Jar Jar, show me the cut with. Hey, yeah. I want the OG ones. <laughs> Yeah. OGs for sure. Yeah. So Disney Plus, uh, November twelfth, six ninety nine. It's gonna be awesome. And Captain Marvel. Didn't they just announce that that's gonna be their big launch movie? Yes. Yeah. That's gonna be available in four K at launch. Yep. Yeah. So they said you're not gonna have. I would. They you know, they didn't promise Endgame or anything of the you know episode nine obviously because it won't be out yet. But yeah, they didn't. Yeah, nothing about the Avengers, but no. Captain Marvel. They made a point. Yeah, to, my guess would be November like. kind of hits the marker where you know what it's probably going to launch, and then the Blu-ray will come out like the next week, pro- probably in that time frame. Yeah. Anything with uh, Far From Home, so they'll be on their bench. But I would imagine that they're going to do. They're still probably going to do the digital because even DC does it. DC just had that uh, the Just League movie come out. Mm-hmm. You had it digital for three weeks. You didn't get it on the DC app until like four days after the Blu-ray came out. Just so they, yeah. I mean, they got to grab a little bit of that money. Yeah, too, try so. to get some of it. Yeah. yeah. And that's reasonable, I think. It is, it is. So since, I mean, this whole thing's been about Disney and Star Wars and Marvel. So one thing that um, the three of us caught up on finally was we all saw Shazam. Yep. Um, I think Chris and I saw the, uh, the preview night before you guys went down to New Orleans. Mm-hmm. You, you luckily got caught up. Um. Actually, we're running a little long on time, so we don't want to do like a huge review, but just little quick thoughts about Shazam. Yeah, quick thoughts was uh, the girls, Jen and I, loved it. I, I had a blast. Don't have a huge depth in the character. Mm-hmm. Um, remembered the show, but not much about it when I watched it when I was a kid. But the movie was a blast. It was fun as hell. It was uh, entertaining, but was heartwarming and had, mm-hmm. you know, human interest. I loved the, you know the heart of his situation and his growth over the show. It was just it, great. Loved yeah, it. It was. Yeah. Um, much the same in the thoughts there. This is the first, it struck me that this is the first superhero movie that Harley was actually asking to go to in a long time. She was excited about this one. My wife asked to go it's, to it. This is, Heather was there opening night. I mean, it was something that they were actually looking forward to more than Avengers, any of that stuff. This was theirs. Mm-hmm. And, different way than Aquaman was. This is something she could relate to. This was a kid becoming a superhero. Um, you n- hit the nail on the head. It was fun. Yeah. It was adorable. Yep. You could, and it had quite possibly my favorite casting of the year as Adam Brody. Oh yeah. He like Adam when Brody. you get the fam- it, yeah. it was perfect. Yeah. And when it happened, I'm sitting there I'm like, Oh, of course, who else would play the adult version of that kid? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was pitch perfect. It was, it was, it was a super cute movie. It was nice. You know, we see all this superhero stuff and all that. And, I loved Aquaman. You know, I love the Avengers movies, all that stuff. It was nice to see them take the C, the C tier character and not give you the same two and a half hour, $300 million origin pump thing like Black Panther did and Captain Marvel did and stuff. It was, they, it was, it looked, didn't look cheap, didn't look overly expensive. Mm-hmm. Obviously there's CGI because he can, you know, he can fly yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. But it wasn't over CGI'd. No. Um, it was, it was cute and it had all like, you know, the teenager stuff and the kid stuff and the foster kid stuff and, it was really well done. It worked. Makes me almost like want more of that. Like instead of like whenever Marvel starts doing more characters, I don't want a big two hundred eighty million dollar shebanger. Give me these little like sixty million dollar ones. You know, I mean, it's probably easier to do a DC than it would be the Marvel characters. Yeah. Well, and they're not trying it into a, trying to tie it into a grander universe. Anymore. Exactly. Although they they you know they they, they did have a they, you know they did but the it kids was were soft. in Aquaman. It was yeah. very yeah. soft. It was just it. Yeah, Tied. kids were like no. Aquaman. There was some Batman in there, the you know, yeah. but but yeah, you're Batman. not trying to bring all that talent in and tie the characters together. Yes, exactly. But it, it makes me. You know, I think you brought up too when we were talking about movies you want to see. Like, give me a you know. I think they spent fifty million bucks on it. Yeah, good. Somewhere me, in there, yeah. Yeah, and they've they, they're not setting the world on fire, but they've made the budget back like two hundred times over already. Yeah, it's got yeah. phenomenal reviews. Yeah, give me a fifty don't million dollar. Try so hard, no, exactly, and then you don't have to pay exactly. so much. Give to me try. a Plastic yeah. Man movie. Then you're give me giving Robert Downey Jr. a hundred million. Every exactly. Movie? <laughs> give me Booster Gold. Give me these other like quirky kind of DC characters. You know, hmm. just bring that kind of stuff on. You know, do Swamp Thing. You know, there's a TV show coming out. Something like that. You know, you got the Doom Patrol show. Yeah, and it's working way better than I thought it was. It's going. so fucking weird. It, yeah, I'm not. Caught that's up one on that it I seem, that I have access to. 
You do? Yeah, it's it's on. It's so weird. So that's also on DC, right? Yeah, yeah, it's mm-hmm. a DC show. So the DC original. Even yeah. though Titans got picked up by Netflix in Canada, Doom Patrol got picked up by Space Channel or something. <laughs> and you that, Canadians, that's coming to me on only. Crave every week. Have you watched it yet? No, but it looks really it's good. It's fucking weird, man. It's, like, it's I fun. like weird. It's, it's strange, kind of, but to, yeah, it's fun. It seems it's kind of for me. It's kind of watch many, I guess. Yeah, that's a little, I mean, bit, that, little bit. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. It's, de- it's definitely different. But that's to say, the DC stuff. Not to you know ring the DC bell again. Some of the DC stuff they've after they've ha- learned from their errors. You know, they got this new show, the new shows. They got the new movies. They're doing stuff differently. Like Doom Patrol is unlike nothing else. Shazam was unlike anything else. That's where I think the niche is. Give me something different because I saw White Sox Shazam again with my brother. I saw that twice. Enjoyed it just as much the second time around. Captain Marvel, I could give two shits about because it was just the same old thing. And There's no no heart to the movie. There's no... No, I think you see that in a lot of things though. If you have something that people love that much, when the pendulum swings the other way, mm-hmm. the backlash is just that much greater. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. it's And it's not that they changed anything. They're still producing the same thing. You just got sick of seeing the same thing over yeah, and over. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Every three times Diminishing a year. Every returns. Year. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Although I'm pretty sure I'm going to like Far From Home because the way they do the new Spider-Man, it kind of has that well, Shazam kind of feel to it. But it's kids. also, yeah. it's even when they've overlapped with the the universe, it's it's still kind of over here. Yeah. And with him going overseas and everything, you know, it's still, it doesn't feel like it's core. So it feels foreign enough. Yeah. 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 I actually did see Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah. Of, uh, even though I haven't watched any of the other ones. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really looking forward to Far From Home. Yeah. I d- did you see Into the Spider-Verse? Oh, no. Oh, and I'm, I, I saw that I had it on the plane today, and I yeah. almost watched it on the plane, but I was like, no, I want to sit and watch this in front of a yes. TV yes. and really appreciate the art that's gone into it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely watch that. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I've been watching religiously lately is Billions. I... I- I was unsuccessful in getting Jen to watch that with me, which means I'm only watching it when I get a chance. And there have been other things that have been in the in the front of it, but I, you know, which disappoints me. All, all I will say is that this season so far has been excellent, and I have been stellar, very, very enthusiastic every Sunday night mm-hmm. for that show to be available. Yeah. yeah. So we went a little over. So let's go ahead. And let's, let's get let's do a top three. Wrap this one up. Um, so since we talked the majority about Star Wars and Star Wars was like kind of the big news item since the last time we got together, we're all excited for episode nine. Mm -hmm. Episode nine is going to be awesome. Awesome. What are three things that you hope to see in episode nine or are looking forward to something that you know is happening in episode nine? All right. So let's start with our guest of honor here. All right. We doing any honorable mentions, Steven? I had one that's easy to skip. Okay. No, well, let's do it. Uh, the only one that I had is just finally figuring out who is Ray and and w- what is going on there. Okay. Right? So that's yeah. my honorable mention. It's not the thing I'm most excited about, but it's been bothering me in the back of my mind. All right. I, I definitely. I'll second that. Yeah. Especially with the title of the movie. Like, are they going to shoehorn into being a Skywalker? Yeah. So yeah, tr- Ray's kind of my honorable mention too. All right. Where's that going? My honorable mentions. The uh, I'd love to see a trash compactor. Love to see yeah. stripping Wookiees. <laughs> um, and, uh, but, but honestly, and you kind of hit on it earlier, just, I want to hear the orchestral hit and I want to see the opening crawl, right? Yeah. Just that, that feeling from when I was, you know, six years, six, old, seven years old, I was, seeing it in the I was theater. five years old. Was it yeah. 77 or 76? 77. 77. 77. So I was six years old and just that, and then the slow scroll. I just can't wait for that moment again. It's, that's usually the thing, right? Yeah. You hear those first first couple notes, and that kind of brings you right back to where you were. And it doesn't matter what shit you saw in the last episode, <laughs> right. if you liked it or not, right. you're going to see a Star Wars It is the thing that started again. your, the Star Wars experience, was that, what am I seeing? Yeah. Mm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Can't wait. Um, no, that's certainly one of them for me. Um, and I actually, I'll touch on the Ray thing a little later, because that's actually one of my top three. But big thing for me is just getting Lando back. Yeah. yeah. Just that one shot of him. So I didn't, he was one of those characters that just kind of disappeared after Jedi. You know, you always wanted to kind of see where that went. Yeah. Um, so to see him- Sold that, 40 ounces. Just, yeah, he was doing 45 ads the whole time. So 
just to get that one little clip of him smiling behind yeah the wheel he's in yeah, the cockpit behind, of the falcon yep. again you know yep so that's my honorable mention okay what we got for number three all, all right. right number three uh, very quick scene in that teaser trailer, but we saw a bunch of characters on a ship flying at high speed, um, but not an enclosed ship. It looked like it was an open ship. We take a skiff from Jedi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're correct. And I saw 3PO on there. And that is definitely something that I'm excited about. And I'm hoping that R2 is also going to be more involved. But having them involved in actual action sequences and part of the story beyond, oh, look, here I am sitting in a corner. Um, that's exciting to me. Maxwell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they uh, they kind of sh- 3PO was, um, you know, they, no one put 3PO in a corner kind of thing for episode eight. He was kind of tucked away there. <laughs> I think they're going to remedy that, mm-hmm. definitely. All right. My number three. You know, kind of along the lines with Ray. I I want to know who the hell the the was it Snoke, S- Snoke, Snoke. Yeah, I I want to know. Right? Is he is he a different representation of somebody that we've known in the past or heard about? Right? There's something about him. So I'm I'm looking forward to that mystery being solved. Me too. I always thought that was Palpatine. Mm. that's yeah, that's what i wondered there. yeah well they're right? gonna shoehorn something in there because yeah. they gotta fix episode eight yeah Chris? he keeps coming back to the fixing episode eight yeah <laughs> I, I wonder why there is no fix there is no look back there is only progress uh, hate to break your heart kid it's all canon now i know it's all canon um my number three is just look at davis whipping out his cannon hey you know um my number three is kind of along the ones the end of that teaser you get the emperor's laugh so if he's still alive, that opens the door to however many other characters. And they play into the potential of a Vader or something by giving you that shot. What? All you see are the, all you see the gloves no. that harkens back to your TIE fighter shot. Those are Vader's gloves. Those are Vader's gloves. We saw Vader burn. So yes, they're Vader's gloves, except Vader's gloves burned with his body on the pyre on the forest moon of Endor. <sighs> I want to get all bookie we on you. We have force ghosts. I mean, it's yeah. Anything but those were Force Ghost when, gloves. When they brought Emperor Palpatine back in the mm-hmm. novels, the expanded universe novels, they 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 had a way to clone Force users. It's Ooh, it's saying. not out of the realm of possibility. That's not on. He sells a lot of action figures, Sean. No one ever really dies, Sean. That that's correct. That's, yes, that's correct. DJ. So my number three is kind of a little bit coming off what Chris was talking about. So you saw, you don't know who the big bad is. This going to this movie. Yeah, yeah, Sean Hogan. <laughs> Sean Hogan is the big guy of the big so, bad. So, you, episode eight left you thinking, is Kylo kind of teetering as to going, you know, turning back to the light because he killed Snoke? Snoke's gone. Phasma's gone. Who's the big bad? Well, then, before they even give you the laugh, they showed you a part of the crippled Death Star. Yes, that was in cool. the ocean. Mm-hmm. And then they give you Palpatine's laugh. <laughs> so. What else are we going to get? Are we going to finally get to see these Knights of Ren characters that they've mentioned? Is that going to come into play? There's Who's a scene where the mask back together. Exactly, and the my biggest hope is if you're getting Palpatine back, and Vader is dead, is Darth Maul coming back? Ooh. Which half of him? Either half. The left. The left. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like a twist. Who cares? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Or are you getting like uh, a you know something? You know, in Canada, the right Twix is on the left. Is it? Yeah. God damn, I thought it was Australia. It gets um, really confusing. Oh god, everything's so fucking confusing up there. Exchange rates. Sorry. Twix. But so, are you getting? <laughs> sorry. Are you getting possibly a new Sith character that possibly the same races? With, I mean, what's what's gonna happen? What are we doing, bad guy wise? Because my guess is. They set Snoke up. JJ served up Snoke to hopefully carry through these three movies. Mm-hmm. That was taken away. See, I actually forgot. Uh, so how are they? Never what, forget. How Sean. are they remedying the bad? Love his bitter tears. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nick, Nick. No, so, so basically, so how are they remedying the bad guy? Is Kylo going full dark? Palpatine's coming back. Is there another Sith Lord? Are we getting the Knights of Ren, etc.? Yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. Those Phasma was such a wasted character. They made so, so much. So far, hype about right? Phasma. I mean, she was, so far. I gotta, yeah, yeah. I do. I do like the. They were talking to um, John Boyega. 
I was yeah. John Bodega. I like so fucking <laughs> John Bodega. Yeah. John Bodega. And uh, they're like, so you took out Captain Phasma. Could you take out Brian Tarth? And he was just like, stood there like, no, 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 no. Brian Tarth would fuck me she up. would fuck him up. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Number two. So number two really harkens back to DJ's number three. It's Palpatine. Mm-hmm. Palpatine is an exciting addition to this. Um, you know, again, everything that's old is new again and bringing back just a beloved evil, evil character um, mm. in in a new series of movies that I really felt have kind of lacked that strength in a bad character. You know, yeah. Kylo Ren is ugh, well, he's, he's your he's emo also, cousin he's from conflicted. up country. Exactly. He's not, he's also not a, a pole of evil. He he's is a hot topic employee. Yeah. <laughs> I, I give much. him more than that, but but he's he's not a pure pole of evil, right? So it's you know, and we've known that someone was behind the strings, and we thought it was mostly Snoke and this and that. But I think that having Palpatine as that anchor of the dark side is going to add a, a nice dichotomy of of light versus mm-hmm. dark again. So I'm excited about that. All right, I would agree. Uh, my number two, something I would hope to see. And it's mostly serious. Is uh, Jar Jar? You know, I, I, I feel like there's an opportunity if they're actually trying to put a cap on the nine, you know, nine movies. He was a character that had a role that it would just be interesting. You know, he he's he's just been disappeared from the universe for plenty of reasons, but. But I'd like to see what would happen if he came back and he's much, much older. He's, you know, slower, impacted, you know, scarred, whatever, you know. Um, As we were by him. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, and, but, but I, I, I kind of hope there's something that, that pulls him in and wraps him up and not in a way that makes fun of him or makes him worse. I wouldn't be opposed to that. Done the right way, that could be cool. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. My number two is really goes back to the sky and two and one are both going to be in the same vein. Um, goes back to the Skywalker family and I'm looking for not that storybook anyway, but that conclusion of the Luke and Leia yeah. story, how they wrap up those two characters. Right. Clearly how we saw Luke go out, Leia didn't go out. Right. How we saw Luke go out isn't the end. I mean, he's your narrator and your teaser. He's still going to be playing a large part in this movie. So how they kind of tie that up, this is a 42-year saga that we've seen here. Yeah. Watching them go from kids to where they are now. So I'm kind of interested to see how they tie those loose ends up. Do they end their stories and everything else is to the sides and previous, or do they end their stories while giving us a future for those left behind, even though they're planning on capping for a while? I don't know. It depends. It's be interesting. It's... We'll get to that. I'm going to have to save that for my last one. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm pretty in line with Chris. So my number two is, and I think we're going to use a Christian expression, uh, saying hello to old friends kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. It's, uh, I, I think it's going back makes, door. Yeah. Back that, door. The way you said it, that also almost makes Chris seem like he has a heart and a, oh, shit. and some emotions. And I, <laughs> it I was think replaced that's by there. a wallet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's awesome to have Lando back. Yeah. I love Linda Curry's and like I said, I read a lot of the books and the graphic novels and he's he's a great character. Um and steel is getting worse all the time. <laughs> uh the biggest thing for me though is having Carrie back and the fact that they didn't they didn't CGI anything. They didn't slap her face on another body and they just went back well, and found so it. they they have affirmatively said that for yeah, a fact. Yes. Said, There's yeah. no CGI Carrie no in CGI. this movie. They had uh, cut scenes, which is why you see Ray in her original costume in the beginning, because they uh, had scenes from Episode Seven that got that cut. Makes they sense. went back and rewrote the script to fit those scenes in, right? To finish her arc, um, which is it's it's I'm sure it's going to be brilliant because they wouldn't do it half ass if, if it was going to suck. They wouldn't do it because he had a lot of respect for her. Um, and then also, like, who else are we going to see? You know, if they start, if they, you know, if they have some big like force go scene as they end this whole nine story arc thing, Mace. Yeah, exactly. You're going to get Mace. You're going to get um, maybe Liam Neeson, Qui-Gon Ghost, or Obi-Wan, or Hugh McGregor. I mean... There were rumors that he filmed scenes. I've heard that, too. I have a specific Ooh. set of Jedi skills. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take my stuff. So, uh, hopefully... I'm, I'm sure it's all going to be beautifully done and very tastefully done, but it, I said, I just, I'm just... 
I want all my guys back for one last hurrah is what it is. So I'm going to ask my number two. It's a beautiful segue into my number one. My number one thing, and I am really hoping that this exists, is that when they were shooting episode seven, that they shot stuff with our three mains back together as one group. Uh, I be- I believe mm-hmm. that footage exists with Han, Luke, and Leia together again. It's in the Snyder Cut. <laughs> <laughs> I-, I believe that they've got at least a shot somewhere with all of them because there's no way that they brought them in a- and didn't get something on film. And that, to me, is the most exciting thing. I don't care if they, find- if they make them force ghosts or what they do, but I want to see all three of them together for one last hurrah in this last film. But that would entail Han being a Force ghost. No, it could be a flashback. Could right. be a no, flashback. Think it could be a Force ghost. Yeah. Could be Force ghost. I I don't know what it's going to be, but I know that there's a way that they are. Well, I'm praying that there's a way that they're going to make that work. Yeah, somebody picked up Han's uh, pierced but cauterized body from the bottom of the shaft before the explosion. No, I mean, even if they do something like during the, if they change their credits up a little bit, where they have like you know, even just like still photos of like starting in seventy seven with the three of them together over oh, and over again. So up. many things that you could spin that on. Though. They've never yeah. done cute on, credits in a Star Wars movie, right? They've never done anything so like Han's that. Make it so the only person nice. that knew where Luke was. That's yeah, part of what a strange Han uh, and Leia. It's, yeah, there's other ways you can play into this. That I, I don't want to see it in the queue though. I want to see it as part of the story. Yeah, whether it's a flashback yeah. or whatever it is, that I'd like s- to see it as part of the story because that's always felt like a loose end. Yeah, yeah. you're right. That 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 yeah. did drive me nuts that you didn't get all, all of them together at once. Mm. It would be nice to know what that big wedge was between Han and Leia. Yeah, actually, the the Han, a wedge in Han and Leia and some of that that history. Yeah. yeah. Um, so my number one is, uh, I'd really like to see forced, forced ghost poker, right? I'd like to see, uh, you know, Yoda, Ben, Anakin, and, and Luke playing this poker. Your strippy, like a, like a bunch of fucking Labrador sitting around a po- poker yeah, table? Yeah, exactly. Fucking that, that's, that's what I hope to see in episode. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> playing the, the fucking, the, the chess with the little <laughs> monsters. And yeah, yeah, sure. That would accept the, the, the monster that. chess. Yes. Well, now I feel like I have Photoshop work to do. <laughs> you clearly do. <laughs> That's my number one. Forest Ghost Poker. <laughs> Chris I have is just no idea what to head. do with you. <laughs> no idea what to do with you. Okay. Well, to be fair, I realize that sounds stupid. It kind of goes into, I mean, you know, seeing old friends as yeah. Forest Ghost, mm-hmm. right? But once that image came into my head, I realized... Truly, that's what I'd like to see. But it also <laughs> coincides with really, I am, I go into movies with an open mind and a clean, you know, I, I really don't try to overthink it. I can't be disappointed, but also so often some of my favorite stuff in things I've waited for or anticipated are things that I Those had no idea. Yeah. Think yeah. Of. yeah. Yeah. Um, how the hell do I follow that? Okay. <laughs> so. My number one goes back to your honorable mentions. Okay. So my number one is tying up that Ray lineage. Yeah. Where at the heart of this whole nine movie saga, it's a Skywalker story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. It's following that family through to its conclusion. Now you have somebody that you've brought in as the main character is the final trilogy. You got a little Game of Thrones action here? There's mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> that would explain why she's so powerful, though. But no, that isn't where I was going with that. Um, what if it was an accident? They did kiss like a an little empire. Midichlorians in in you know. Oh, we don't talk about midichlorians. No, we don't. You leave that out. Um, Hold your tongue. <laughs> it's easier to believe in a religion, right? <laughs> no sarcasm there. So, but no, that's um. There is a tie there. You don't know what that is yet. Right. But she is the natural conclusion of that. Or, I mean, it'd be very lazy. Well, if you can clone into, shit in some one of the books, though, I mean, that doesn't that seem more likely than otherwise? You only have so many combinations of people. The that only other way you other can people. go is if you're leaning on Kylo. Yeah. Ben is your last Skywalker heir in that line. Yeah. But in that case, then you got to flip the script. Exactly. So, yeah, because if it's Rise of the ben Skywalker, come, Ben comes to the light and he comes to the light. Ray goes to the is dark. Is Ray evil? Yeah. I mean, is Ray. So, is she the, the one that's. Teams? Welding the helmet back together. Yeah. Oh, come on. That, that would be such a turn that would it's be unjustified only, with any evidence that has been in the eight the movies. The only reason that. I would say it's not going to happen 
is because Disney at its heart is a marketing company. Yeah, yeah. and they can't. And sell you're not gonna Ray Dolls. She's gonna, bad. It yeah. would be great though. That, that would, would be, an, be amazing an amazing flip. twist. That would put but, more girls on the pole than Daddy Issues, man. If they flipped the Jedi and <laughs> made her back. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Again, there's a joke there to be made, but I can't. <laughs> the only other thing I could think of is if it's just somebody random. And and I would almost be interested to see that as if you focused on, you know, Ray and uh, and Kylo and that was the whole focus, but then out of the blue it's like, "Oh no, the actual person with the Skywalker connection is like Poe or Finn or somebody like it was, the it was was about Pope. Uncle Butthead, and he would have gotten away from it if it weren't for your damn kids, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. just, Captain they can't have Joseph somebody, Skywalker. Right? <laughs> who was <laughs> uh, who Skip, was Skip what's Skywalker. his name on Jakku? Right, her her old priestly protector who died on Jakku. Um, oh, um, Max von Sydow. Yeah, 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 right. You, it it can't it cannot involve somebody that we have not seen. Or at least heard about it cannot, or that's a fundamental. No, you can't foul. do you can't do a stunt casting or no. No, it's Chekhov's it. gun. It's you. You, you, you know, if they're firing a bullet that doesn't come from a weapon that has already been evidenced, it's mm-hmm. bullshit. Well, the thing is too is that, like you know, it's it's inverse Chekhov. Piggyback on Chris's number one. Yeah, no, like no. one of the right. the things for me is that it is such a mystery. Like I said, we talk about Endgame. You kind of know how Endgame is going to go for the most part. Half the people this, decide are going to come back. This is going to be such a complete. Well, yeah, un- of course un- they're already signed for TV shows. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, so this is gonna be—it's gonna be like I know they're gonna wrap stuff up, but no one else had any idea how they're gonna do it. People have theories, but no, you don't really. There's no clear-cut like straight line path to how this is all gonna wind up. So right. So it's gonna be so uh, cool about mysteries it. of faith. Mysteries. So what's your number one, DJ? So my number one is what are they doing with Luke Skywalker? Ah, okay. So I don't think he's dead. He's narrating the trailer. No. And I don't and think he he's a, says yes. Not everybody's dead or whatever. And here's the thing: I don't think he's a force ghost because yeah. So he like disappears in the cloak, whatever. If he but tr- nobody killed him, and if he truly died, the robot arm would have fell to the ground too. Good point. Yeah. So you the think? I think he teleported. I think he teleported. That's cool. That's I don't think I he's hope. dead. Did he teleport naked? That no, no, that was my yes. next thing. Just, just the cape was <laughs> yes, left behind. Bitch. It was just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think they talked to Kevin, and they was yeah, exactly, what he exactly. Had to say, exactly. We're gonna see Luke Skywalker's the, the, dong in this movie. Their first yeah, force teabagging. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Liam Neeson's gonna be a body double for him. Yeah, it's, gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be Batman damned all over again. Oh. No, I want to because so the one thing, the biggest thing I had against Episode Eight was because, like I said before, I've read all the graphic novels and the novels and all that stuff, and I've never got to see. Master Luke Skywalker actually like you know full potential you know do anything I in the right. books he destroys shit he is so awesome and I want that to happen I want to see Luke fight Palpatine Palpatine to come back turn Ray dark and Luke has to fight Palpatine and possibly well, kill Ray if to save his nephew or something I hadn't like that. thought of a Luke Palpatine sign, give me that fucking give me that now I want that fight so but bad you know what I like if if you can't if you get Luke, ghost or otherwise, in a room with Palpatine, whatever he is, I want to hear Luke talk about the, the throne room fight. Yeah. I want to hear, right, that will actually bring a circle for me, hearing him, I watched you, you know, through the lightning, you threw at me, shocking my body. I watched my father pick you up. Yeah. In his moment of redemption and throw you down the ship. I want to hear that conversation, not a fight. I want to hear them talk. Could about you it. imagine if somewhere in the movie Ray gets her hand cut off? Right? We'll just say that. Possibly by by Kylo. Luke has to go onto Makes the sense. Luke, Luke has to go onto the fallen death star and fight Kylo to to try to turn him back good. Yeah. And as they're fighting, their lightsabers cross and it flashes back to Empire with the lightsabers crossing. Yeah. Or Jedi with the lightsabers yeah. crossing. And they, they go back between the fights. So you want the same movie? Yes, I want the same movie. Yeah. See, I just had this horrible vision of Ray's cut off crossing. hand yeah. stuck t- to Luke's forehead like a unicorn. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's why I want. I, you're still moving? Yes. Yeah. I want Luke. <laughs> you can grab stuff now. It's very convenient. Ah. It's like Cousin It runs off. Oh, um, I, want, I want Luke to still be alive and I want him to actually do something. Right. And I want to know how this whole thing's in. Like, it's just the title has me very intrigued. So that's it. Yep. Could you possibly recount the three by four? You know. Yeah, uh, we're all excited for Palpatine, Lando, Leia, cheating. Luke. That's, we that's just want the movie to get. That's yeah, summarized. And Yoda playing yeah. poker with Obi Wan. 
Yes. That's what we want. And dogs. Force exactly. Ghost exactly. Poker, no, you dogs. don't take Obi Wan for all his cash. He is. Or he's just sneaking chips with the force. Flush I have. Mm, Mm. Mm. The balls to call me you do not have. (laughs) Not not have. Mm. Poker face. You do not. (laughs) (laughs) Um so yeah, so sad. We went long. It's been a while since we got together and so much stuff happened. So we we had to go long. Hopefully I can trim a little bit out, but it's gonna be a long one. But it is what it is, but um one thing I want to tease for next time, because what I want to have happen is I want our guest here to come up with his own idea. And I wanted to have the, an episode done all out of them, all out of him. Right. His his the, his thoughts, the... his his planning, his outline. Pick the top three, pick the category, and uh, we'll get that recorded before he goes back well, to I Canada. Think, I think our timing's going to be tight. It but, is. We're going to figure it out. But I believe he has a significant surprise that is a... Uh, is is an earth shaking development for the Fan Men podcast. Yeah. He's acting and kind of it's shifty, a good one. So. It's a good one, boys. It's a good one, and I I I don't know that Why anyone. I, <laughs> I don't know that anyone in the universe will appreciate it as much as the four men in this room. But it is it is a it it's a it's a fan action of uh, of epic proportion. See how it goes. See how it goes. So. So thank you. That was the snap yeah. of Stephen Chris. Yeah. I think half the room just dusted. So thank you for sticking with us for this long episode. Sorry we took so long to get back on the horse here, but uh, thanks for listening. Once again, hit us up on Twitter at fmen37. Uh, we're gonna. I think we're gonna be doing our first uh, fan men giveaway coming up. Oh, awesome. Next couple weeks, I got some stuff to give mm. away. Um. So yeah. So said thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Later, guys. Woo.